UK developer Codemasters has a long, rich history of racing games that's blossomed over its 37 years in the business. And in the last decade in particular, Codemasters has even doubled down on the racing space. It's forged its own engine technology, the Ego Engine, and embarked on a mission to create every flavor of racing game you could imagine. We have the annual F1 series, of course, we have the event racing of Grid, but then the third pillar would be its rally racing series, Dirt, which divides into two categories. First, there's the arcade-centric thrills of the main Dirt series, where the Eco engine was last used in Dirt 4. And then there's the more simulation-focused Dirt Rally line, with Dirt Rally 2.0 released in 2019. Through it all, each one has has a common ground in the Ego engine, and as a technical foundation, it served Codemasters rather well. That is, until recently, with Dirt 5 switching to an evolved form of the Unrush engine in 2020, and then this year, the launch of EA Sports WRC sees a more radical break with the game jumping to Unreal Engine 4 instead. This engine change from Ego Engine to UE4 raises some big questions. Firstly, have the visuals truly benefited in the transition? In comparison to the likes of, say, Dirt Rally 2, which was handled by the very same team in 2019 and fits the same pure simulation mold as EAWRC, is the rally experience improved? And how does it run today on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, S and PC platforms? Now, the official reason for the engine change, based on interviews with Codemasters, is to allow for larger circuits. In EAWRC, it's possible to map out longer rally routes of up to around 30 kilometers. Seemingly, there was a size limit with its own Ego Engine tech, and Unreal Engine 4 allows the team to break through this barrier. And no doubt, the jump to Unreal Engine also allows Codemasters to reap certain benefits native to the tech, like platform scalability and features like temporal anti-aliasing upsampling. Plus, this is potentially being used as a test bed for future games. Let's keep expectations in check here though. This is Codemasters' very first racing game using UE4, but it's more involved than that. The team's own multi-surface handling model plus the car physics are still in place, and so it's the rendering technology over the top that's changed. Alas, on that front, there's no push to the latest Unreal Engine 5 either, and so new features like Lumen and Nanite are off the table. Though, oddly enough, it is developed just for the newer console generation, so PS5, Xbox Series X, and S plus PC. It's a genuine first for a Codemasters game to ditch the last-gen PS4 and Xbox One machines, but to be blunt, the visual upgrade over, say, Dirt Rally 2 from 2019 isn't exactly always evident. For a start, there's no push for ray tracing features, for example, nor any plans to add it in via a patch. There's also no 120Hz mode on PS5 or Xbox Series X, as we had in, say, F123 on the Ego Engine. It simply runs at 60fps on console at best. So yes, in swapping engines, you have to wonder if more could and should have been done. It does support AMD's FSR 2 and Nvidia's DLSS 3 on PC at least, in a way to help with the high demands of VR support, but otherwise the result is at times underwhelming from a visual standpoint, especially for a new gen title. So let's see what we've come from. Perhaps the most obvious point of comparison to EAWRC is Dirt Rally 2.0 from 2019, which was handled by the same team within Codemasters. Jumping back to Dirt Rally 2 then, I've got to say it holds up well by comparison. Running on an Xbox Series X system today, visuals are still respectable. It's in the way the lighting model reacts to the polish on the car bodies, the way cars leave imprints in the mud, and the high density of grass in the New Zealand stage. Even the geometry for Rocky Terrain looks solid for a 2019 release. Crucially, the physics also hold up really well. We have the mud build up on cars, the defamation, it's all here with some nice screen space effects like sun flares. Certainly, tracks are not as expansive as the latest effort, EAWRC, but there are a few upsides. Most obviously, Dirt Rally 2 runs at a mostly native 4K at a locked 60 frames per second on Series X here. And neither of those points, the crisp fixed 4K image or the locked 60 FPS, are true of EAWRC today on these latest consoles, as we'll get to. 
Switching to EAWRC today, it's possible to see some upgrades. Rock geometry is more detailed perhaps, but it's not an exact one-to-one -one comparison given stages differ between the games. What does strike me though is that the visuals aren't exactly an obvious leap. There's really no bullet point next-gen upgrade to speak on here. And in fact, you could conceive of this running on older PS4 or Xbox One systems with the inevitable drop in resolution or settings. There are some high points, the weather states being one, plus the ability to change the terrain by the season. We get a frankly great variety of cars and huge sprawling stages, some recreations, other inspired by real places. And of course, the handling model is as ever superb, servicing some of the best rally racing on console. But then there are clear rough spots as well. You'll spot screen tearing and frame rate drops on PS5 and Series X. The resolution is also visibly under 4K on each premium machine, with dynamic scaling taking the image to as low as 1080p native at times. And then there's also the issue of camera judder. This is unrelated to the frame rate, but every console and PC has this judder issue and it kicks in in almost every opening panning shot around a car. Essentially, we get uneven intervals with the camera movement itself. So while the frame rate is 60 FPS at these points, it still produces this erratic sense of motion. One benefit to EAWRC is that it's rather uncomplicated on the mode selection front, in that there just isn't any. There's no quality versus performance mode toggle or anything like that, which is rather refreshing in a way. In comparison, PS5 and Series X push an identical image. Each targets 4K via reconstruction and also dynamic resolution scaling, though typically results come in at in-between numbers like 1296p on each. And meanwhile, Series S runs at lesser figures. 1440p is the target there, but 720p is the lowest recorded pixel count. Codemasters has revealed that both Series X and PS5 run at equivalent to PC's high settings, while Series S settles for a mixture of medium and low. And that's really true to the results here. Fundamentally, PS5 and Series X owners get the same package in visual terms, the one big difference between them is shadow quality though, where PS5 does seem to get a higher quality preset, sharpening the shadows on the ground here. Otherwise, the two are precisely matched in every other way. And it's on Series S where the settings drop, especially in resolution I've got to say, is more obviously felt. Focusing on the Xbox consoles, there's a few trade-offs of course to getting Series S running at 60fps. Firstly, 1440p is the target, though practically speaking it's often much lower. Sadly, drops as low as 720p cause fine detail to break up. I mean, check out the detail up ahead from the starting grid here. The power cables ahead almost fizzle into view on Series S, with too little pixel detail to construct the actual line. Beyond that, for the rest, I'll swap to full image shots of Series S and X. Notably, in switching between them, you'll see foliage density is reduced on the 4 teraflop console, creating sparse environments all round. I suspect in motion this won't really stick out, but it's a definite loss in detail. And less of a frequent issue perhaps is that crowds are thinned out on Series S in town areas as well. The final shot here is a real nitpick though. Ambient occlusion quality is dropped and there's also lower quality reflections across the car body. I had a chance to check out the PC version too. Set up with an AMD Ryzen 7 5700X CPU and an Nvidia RTX 4080, there's enough horsepower here to hit a native 4K at ultra settings. Looking its very best then, PC offers a number of decent upgrades over console. It's almost like an equivalent step from say, Series S to Series X. So for a start, the foliage density and draw is boosted even further afield, but I think the bigger upgrade really again boils down to the resolution difference. A true native 4K on PC clearly trumps the upsampled dynamic resolutions between 1080p and 4K on Series X. Zooming in, there's no competition on a proper 4K display. The clarity of fine elements like trees again shows the benefits of a one-to-one -one pixel match with zero upscaling. Resolution aside though, the visual enhancements at Ultra on PC are worth pushing to, if your GPU is able to support it. The grass density is boosted at Ultra, while shadow resolution also gets a neat upgrade. 
The result being sharper, cleaner shadow outlines across the terrain, plus a superior form of ambient occlusion. Reflections across car bodies also get a bump, and it goes without saying that PC has the ability to push for higher frame rates, 120 FPS and beyond, with multiple screen arrangements set to be supported down the line. All of which takes us to the matter of performance. Let's jump back to consoles first, and there's an unmissable issue with the AWRC today on PS5, Series X and S in the form of drops to 50 FPS with screen tearing. Taking PS5 to start, even running at a dynamic 4K with drops to 1080p, it's certainly not a perfect lock. In fairness, it is mostly a solid 60fps across the stage, but do expect parts of a route to run at between 50 to 60fps with constant full screen tearing. Notably, I've seen this on the Monte Carlo stage after around the 4 minute mark, and it's repeatable on every console. Another big stress point is in these busy town segments with crowds on the side, heavily forested areas, and especially replays after the race. Switching to Series X, it's the same deal. Again, most of the rally racing gets you to 60fps, but it's really hard to ignore the full screen tearing and the drops to 50fps at crucial turns. It interferes with the input response on screen, and yes, it's all the more a shame to see 60fps is a challenge here, given games like F1 23 on the Ego engine and Dirt 5 on the Onrush engine got to 120fps on Series X and PS5. On console, the push to 60fps isn't always successful, especially so for a rally game where we need a rock solid lock, and especially given we're talking about PS5 and Series X. What we had in terms of playability with Dirt Rally 2 over four years ago now remains smoother and sharper in terms of image quality. Switching to Series S running EAWRC though, there is some good news here at least. For all its visual downgrades, performance is at least on par or better than Series X. All the drops with screen tearing happen in the exact same spots. But then there are segments of the map which simply run at 60, where Series X and PS5 do not. In this sense, it's the best performing version of the three, though when the GPU is pushed, we're still getting those tear lines and lots of drop frames. I'll also say, in the discourse surrounding EAWRC, there are many comments pointing out occasional hitching on console. It's more of a PC issue, which still has shader compilation stutters, but in my many hours of testing on console, I've got to say I've simply not experienced any hitches yet, as of version 1.3. It may just be my good luck, but it's something to be aware of. A final word on PC performance on our RTX 4080 machine. The upside is the PC version has been patched to improve launch issues with shader compilation stutters. However, it's still not 100% over the line. Essentially, any first brush with a shader effect, like water splashes, or even collisions with geometry causes a big hitch. You get this surge of dropped frames. Even a change to the racing instructions up ahead at times triggers a hitch. It's almost entirely random when it might happen, though some routes do appear with zero issue. Now eventually, after enough time, the shader cache does fill up with the relevant data to avoid most drops, but it's still a blemish on the package. The timing of a turn is completely wrecked when it happens. I've tried it several ways, playing at a native 4K, and also with DLSS quality mode, or even the game's basic TAA upscale method. And even if it does solve itself after several hours of play, it's hardly a great first impression. As for general performance on the RTX 4080 here, at least it's an often robust 60fps lock otherwise. Genuine GPU inflicted drops are limited to specific areas, down to 50fps which are easily solvable by using the DLSS quality mode or simply dropping the shadow setting. Otherwise, at 4K, ultra settings with cinematic anti-aliasing applied, it works well. Though you might notice the camera judder issue we mentioned earlier is much more noticeable on PC. Even at 60fps, actual gameplay is affected, causing the motion of the chase cam to refresh at uneven intervals. Across the board, PC has more than enough options to address any GPSR drops. The hitching though, the shader compilation stutters, are out of our hands and still need addressing. It ruins any sense of control you have over the vehicle, and in those cases, the experience is sadly worse than on console. Looking at PS5, Series X and S though, it's still not the ideal experience there either. EAWRC runs up low 60fps at points, even on the most powerful consoles on the market today. 
Overall, as the first use of Unreal Engine by the studio, it gets a lot right in its handling. The feel of the game is so close to the excellent Dirt Rally 2, which is great news. But if Unreal Engine 4 is in the future for Codemasters racing games, and if its efforts are from now on focused on the new generation of consoles, we must expect a lot more in features, visual upgrades, and crucially, stability and performance. But that's all for me today. If you did find this video useful or insightful in any way, feel free to like or subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell for instant notifications as any new video lands. To get a high quality version of this video, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net and to get in touch directly, you know where to find me. But for me for now, thanks for watching.